What year were you born in? In 1947. Okay. Where were you born? In Ohio. Okay. Describe the environment you grew up in. Uh, central farm country. <laughs> central, Cal I mean, central Ohio. And everywhere around was farming. Farming? Mm -hmm. Did you go to a public or a private school? Uh, public school. Public mm -hmm. school? Did you, do you have any siblings? I have a younger brother and older sister. What is your fondest memory from your childhood? Ah, roaming around the countryside and the <laughs> creeks and the bayous and the woods and all the fields and just being around farm, farm country. Yeah. Did your mother work outside the home or was she a stay-at-home mom? Uh, no, she worked outside the home. Mm -hmm. okay. What is the highest level of education you completed? Me? Uh -huh. Oh, um, college degree. Uh, have 190 units or something. Yeah. That's a lot. I know. Do you remember doing disaster drills in school? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. You did? Yeah, the um, atomic raids. Mm -hmm. We'd have to get under our desks and, yeah, I remember that. Did that impact you in any way? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and if you want me to comment on that, um, eventually, after um, the Vietnam War, coming back from that in the 80s was something called Beyond War. And it was a movement of wanting to get rid of all the nuclear armaments in the world. And so I was involved with that movement, which actually was the beginning of bringing down the whole um, the communist wall in East Germany. And so that was a big so, moment in your time? Yeah. yeah. Do, you, um, do you remember any of the major events of the civil rights era? Yeah, I do. I was um, in high school. I graduated in 1965. And so most of that was going on during that time of high school. Um, and I remember much of that. Um, a lot of, I, by this time I had moved to California, mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me, and um, was going to a school in Whittier, at Whittier High School. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of our, my friends and graduates were already at Berkeley, UC mm -hmm. Berkeley, and so they were informing us all the time of what was going on there, and um, civil rights and all the war protests and uh, mm -hmm. free speech movement. Did and, you participate in any of them? Um, I did. Later on, I was a student at mm -hmm. Berkeley, and um, in 1970, watched, uh, was involved in protests. Um, when I got back from Vietnam in 1969 and 70, I was going to school at Foothill College and um, joined a group called uh, Vets for Peace, mm -hmm. and we protested um, against the war because no one seemed to be listening. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was involved in that as well. Do you have any strong memories of the Vietnam War? Yeah, I was uh, uh, in the Army. The first part of it was that if you weren't going to school or you didn't have, going to college, or you didn't have um, a physical defect or some kind of deferment, mm -hmm. um, then you would be drafted. And I didn't want to go in the Army as a, as a soldier, mm -hmm. uh, an infantry soldier. So I thought, well, I'm going to go in, because I knew I couldn't pay for school mm -hmm. with, if I didn't have a good job when I got out. So I thought if I could be a turbine engine mechanic, I would. And I could, I could pay for my education once I got out. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's how I did it. Um, but I went in as a crew chief mm -hmm. and, uh, in Vietnam and uh, found out immediately that this was a helicopter war. And so you flew all the time. And um, I had other opportunities, so um, my commander realized that I could type mm -hmm. and type well, and so he asked me to crew for him, and the rest of the time I was in the office doing typing and all mm -hmm. the things that are required of the administrative team. So you were kind of like one of the lucky ones? Yeah. Saved my life knowing how mm -hmm. to type, literally. Yeah. 
Um, do you recall your whereabouts when the death of President John Kennedy in November 1963 was announced? Yes, I was sitting in my chemistry class uh, and the word came over the loudspeaker and everyone just sat there in shock and, and just numb, couldn't, couldn't even believe it. Because he was such a youthful president and was so influential in just the, the three years that he was president. Um, but young people had such hope in him and um, to know that he was, he was killed just mm -hmm. set us all in a state of numbness, really. Couldn't even talk hardly. How about the death of Martin Luther King? Oh, that was in 68, and that was a whole string of deaths, and that mm -hmm. was, I was in Vietnam at the time, and um, it left me feeling like there's something institutional about all of this. Mm -hmm. The great leaders, the great spokesmen, someone's out to get them, mm -hmm. and it's a political thing. It's not uh, a terrorist threat, or isn't someone personally targeting them um, just because they wanted to. Mm -hmm. And so, and I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I began to realize that there's some kind of institutional thought behind this. Either the government or the business mm -hmm. leaders or mafia. I didn't know what, mm -hmm. but I knew something was up. Yeah. So. Did you watch the landing of America um, of Americans on the moon in July 1969 on television? Yeah, in fact, my daughter was born on the 20th of mm. of um, July when that landed, and I was yes, I was uh, watching it in in on in awe and disbelief. You know, it's just a wonderful accomplishment. Mm -hmm. Um, were you involved in the UFO strikes led by Cesar Chavez? Um, I was very aware of it. I, my in-laws, I was married by that time, mm -hmm. late in college, and um, my relatives were farmers here. And, um, and so we talked a lot about that. But they were um, very supportive of the farm workers. and. Um, as just farmers, because they weren't, they didn't hire farm mm -hmm. contractors, but what they did is they made a place for the families to, to live, built a building and showers and, and cooking facilities, and, and the, the family would, families, there were two mm -hmm. families, and they would come back every single year because he treated them so well. And um, so, but not all farmers were doing that. Mm -hmm. And um, so, um, yeah, I had uh, a deep reverence for Cesar Chavez and, and the whole movement, because I could see what was going on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what impact did the events of September 11, 2001 have on you? Do you believe the event still has impact on your life? Oh, definitely. My daughter just came back from Afghanistan. Um, My thinking was mm -hmm. <clears throat> about this, that we had a blockade against Iraq, and we had the whole, I think it was the Fifth Fleet in, um, in uh, just south of, of uh, the Suez Canal. Mm -hmm. And if, if Hussein wanted to put three trucks together in a convoy, within five minutes we would have them obliterated. Mm -hmm. And so for 10 years this went on, and and when 9-11 happened and everyone was beginning to point their fingers at Saddam Hussein, mm -hmm. um, we didn't have to go to war, we already had them quarantined, there was no, nothing mm -hmm. they could do. And so it was, again, it was just, my thinking was, this is institutional. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, um, and it was very difficult because it's a very conservative area here in the valley. And at school, everyone was ranting and raving about, mm -hmm. oh, we're going to go to war, we're going to go to war. Yeah. And, 
And I'm thinking that's the last thing we need to do after having experienced Vietnam personally by mm -hmm. myself. I mean, for myself. And um, it was really an experiment in military mm -hmm. again, as was the Vietnam War. And that was to explore all these munitions and new jets and new helicopters. Mm -hmm. and, and <clears throat> But the same thing for um, Iraq. Uh, we didn't need to go to war. Mm -hmm. I was certainly against it from the beginning, and um, and now it's just it was just an utter catastrophe all the way around, and we were duped into believing a bunch of lies mm -hmm. and creating fear. It was just fear mongering, mm -hmm. and it's going on to the state. It's institutional. Yeah. It's in the government, and the government stands for big business. I mean, that's what it. For me, that's what it, it boils down to. So, yeah. that's all I think I got. That's all this question? Yeah. Oh, wow. Hmm. Hi, my name is Nomi Varniga, and I interviewed Mr. Steyer. And as I was interviewing him, he told me about the disaster drills he had in school. Um, he, and he explained that they would get under the desk and how that impacted him after coming from the Vietnam War. Coming back from that, he joined a group in the 1980s that was called the Beyond War, and it was a movement of wanting to get rid of all nuclear arm armaments, and it was the beginning of bringing down the communist wall in East Germany, and that really impacted him. And as I remember in class, we talked about the disaster drills, how they went on in school because of all the nuclear, like, attacks that were supposedly going to happen in the U.S. And kids would have to go under their desk and put their hands over their shoulders and, like, hide, like, protect themselves in case there was a nuclear, like, attack. Another one was the John F. Kennedy assassination in 1963. And he told me that he was sitting in his chemistry class and that it came over the loudspeaker. And he explains how everybody, when that happened, everybody stayed in shock. And, like, it was just young people. And he explained that President John F. Kennedy was such a useful president and a lot of young people looked up to him. He said that he, that people had so much, so much hope in him to help them, like, in many ways. And that is how it influenced me the way i interviewed him helped me understand deeply more how things were back then because he actually got to see like he actually lived it and i got to read about it but he actually lived it and those were his real experiences and how that made him feel and like made him become like the person he is he was in the vietnam war so he he knew how the war was going on and then having to come back and everything being different